I was a storyboard artist on this cartoon series in the 1980s. And this was a lot of fun to draw. You also might know me from the Wolverine solo story that I did at Marvel. George Perez was the inker on this. I was lucky to get Perez. He saw my pencils and he said, can I ink this? And uh, Jim Shooter gave him the go ahead. And I must say that George added a lot to the story. I drew all these basic poses and action scenes, but he added so much depth of detail in the backgrounds. Drawing out the entire club. You also might know me from Nightwing and Flamebird. This appeared in, uh, I think it was World Finest Comics. And I was inked by Romeo Tangel, a Filipino inker, who was also part of the Brit the uh, Filipino invasion that occurred in the 1970s with Alfredo Acala, Ernie Chan, and Tony de Zuniga. Again, I was grateful to get this job. It added a lot to my credentials as a comic book artist. Later, uh, stories were inked by Armando Gill and Dave Simons. Now let's talk about John Buscema, the master figurative artist. There were several of these artists in the 1970s that were masters of the figure. One was John Buscema, there's no question, a master of anatomy. Another one was Neil Adams, another mentor of mine. And another mentor of mine was Gil Kane. So here we see John Buscema using a homemade light box. Now a light box is an invention that you could put a sketch down onto the light box and have lice, light forced through Bristol drawing paper. So you could see the image below and do your pencil work. Now John Buscema didn't start drawing on his page until he made a sketch, just like Gil Kane. Neil Adams made sketches. None of these masters just sat down and started drawing. So you see here, this is an actual layout by John Buscema. You see those foreshortened legs there? It's coming right towards the reader. And he's got that impact of Conan being hit by this giant tiger. So John has put down everything that's in the room. There's a shield on the wall. There's curtains in the background. And there's this dynamic action figure here, seen from below angle. Now what John did is he put this on his light box so he could see the image. And he did his pencil drawing right here. You can see it. So he's followed everything that was on that sketch. Here's the tiger. It's, its head's turning in the exact direction that he sketched. And you see the workout of that leg. It's incredible. You can see how the parts of the leg from the bottom are going into the upper part of the leg. He's also used a uh, drapery action here. You can see how the folds of uh, the drapery from that like uh, cape-like structure are flowing. He's also used light and shadow on the top here. He's indicated all this now for the inker. The inker would get this and have to make decisions where we because they're going to follow the drawing and complete the inking. Now, Basema did this for every drawing. Here's a drawing later uh, of, of Tarzan. This is pretty uh, amazing, a dynamic drawing. Look at that arm here on Tarzan. Boy, this guy understood anatomy, and he knew for shortening too. Look, I moved this arm away from the other arm. And then he put this heavy emphasis on the leg coming down. And look at that angle of the horse. It's, it's seen from three quarters bottom view. And the guy getting knocked off the horse, amazing. He's also used this tree to lead you back into the drawing. 
There's another guy in a horse. He just sketched this. I think he just made this up. Maybe he looked at horses later from other artists and tightened it up. But at this point, it's a very gut level drawing where everything is uh, basically sketched out. Here he foreshortened the leg. The leg goes forward and then it goes back. That's called foreshortening. Again, John would put this on his light box. The sketch is here on his light box. The Bristol paper is over it. And here is the sketch that was penciled. So he's added this foreground sketches of these uh, foliage. Indicated everything here. Look what he did with this leg. I thought this was amazing. Look at that thick line on top of the leg. Look how he did the knee. It's a light and shadow. And look at that curve of, of the knee go, leg going down with this like arced, almost V-shape on the muscle here. And again, he, he really followed that horse. Look what he did with the drapery here on this guy. He bent the drapery towards the reader. And you see the shadow under it? That's really important. That indicates action and speed. Look at that foreshortened Jack Kirby leg over there. A lot of this was based on uh, him studying Jack Kirby. I don't think Kirby could draw a horse like that, but John Bassem was a draftsman. And he took the Kirby uh, dynamics and added realism to it. Not unlike, uh, let's say, Neil Adams. I like this leg here. It goes forward and then it goes back. Now we're coming to the Filipino artist that would ink John Basema on the Savage Sword of Conan. You see this pen here? This is from the 1970s. It was a Pelican pen. P-E-L-K-I-N. Now this was a Fulton pen. The Filipinos put India ink into it. Now this meant that they could outline drawings. They constantly were filling this with ink. Tony DeZuniga, who did a lot of the inky on John Basema, had this pen. I also had the pen, so I was able to assist Tony DeZuniga in doing uh, background figures and or backgrounds. So he'd outline everything with this pen, the Pelican pen, fountain pen. Now we're seeing a John Basema actual pencil drawing. John again had sketched this out, put it on his light box, and did this incredible anatomy oriented drawing. This guy was an absolute master of the figure. There's no fakery here. He knows how the arms connect into the body. He knows how to foreshorten the legs and make it come forward and back. Again, this is very Jack Kirby-ish. That's where he learned that stuff. He's also heavily influenced by Byrne Hogarth, who was the Tarzan artist. I mean, let's look at this figure here. He's got this crazed, yelling figure. But look at the arm, how the wrist connects. Now, this might look sketchy, but it's not really, because uh, he indicated everything here. He's got that hand worked out. It's gripping that sword. This gorgeous body from underneath is a back view. Look, I made the ponytail move. It's an action movement. I asked uh, John Basemo when I attended his uh, How to Draw Marvel Way comic classes in the 1970s, and I asked him about his influence on anatomy. He told me he was heavily influenced by Byrne Hogarth, and he learned how to draw his back muscles from Byrne Hogarth's Tarzan from the 1940s, and those were uh, comic strips from the Sunday papers that he had clipped. Again, look. You got one leg on the ground, and look at that Jack Kirby-ish leg right here. 
going away from the reader. Rich Buckler would pick up on this stuff too. He's another master of the figure. Now we have the pencil drawing. What happens next? The inker comes in. Wow, this is Tony de Zuniga, Filipino. He's in the Neil Adams School of Realism, you can see here. He inked this pretty much like Neil Adams would have inked it, if you ask me. Okay, what Tony did is he outlined this using his Pelican pen. A fountain pen filled with India ink. What he would do next, after he outlined the whole job, he would ink it with his number two Windsor Newton Sable brush. Again, he wasn't even looking at reference. He just inked it. I saw him ink this. He knew so much about light and shadow. He knew the back anatomy. Captured the mo motion and movement of that ponytail on this guy. Look at the dead guy here. Look at that dark and light, the highlight on the hair. Again, look at that beautiful hand with a shadow underneath it. And the fingers going down and also shadow. He also used Zipatone. He had to cut all the Zipatone out here. That was uh, a plastic type uh, printed dot screen. You had to cut it out and move it all around the figures. This is a lot of work to do. Assistants often did this. I like how he did his axe. He's going from... Uh, Drawing it in line to this heavy shadow underneath it. Look at the blood dripping out of this guy's body. That's cool. Very Neil Adams like. A master of uh, realism, Tony DeZoniga. When he got in trouble and the deadlines were coming up, he had me outline some of the figures. Because I had the Pelican pen. When it got really bad and the deadline got super heavy, he'd call an Alfredo Akella, Ernie Chan, and whatever other Filipino artists were around. It might have been Young Montano, any of these younger guys. They'd come in and help brush in the inking because Tony had already outlined all the figures. Now, uh, here's a masterpiece of uh, photocopy uh, of uh, John Basema's pencil artwork. He had no problem convincing you that this is a ship galley. He also, check this out. He's got the uh, ropes going from very skinny to medium to very super fat. Boy, this guy was an absolute master of anatomy. All these arm poses, you can learn to draw the poses just by looking at Basema. And here's Conan pulling up himself. Wow. And again, uh, Basema has drawn out everything here. He's got the uh, uh, like pole device here. Or I guess it's a guiding device for the ship. Conan's holding onto it. And you got the uh, other parts of the ship all sketched out. I love this panel, how the chain's falling. Look, it starts out real thin and skinny. Gets thicker, thicker, and then it comes right towards the viewer and then a big splash of water. Wow. And then the ship. Very blocked in and structured. Look at the sail, how he made that sail... Uh, expand and the water is coming right towards the reader that's cool now alfredo akella another master filipino inker decided to do this job in washes so what he's done here he's outlined all the different parts of the ship making sure that the ropes are going from small to medium to large and then putting light and shadow. Wow, look how Conan's grabbed that girl there. His arms are around her. And he's still pulling on the chain. 
Now, Alfredo Kella, master of light and dark shadows. He did this all with a brush. And washes, these are ink washes. What an ink wash is, you take India ink and you put it in water. And you put it down and it becomes lighter in tone. And here's how he's added to this drawing. The bolts, for instance, weren't on that uh, thing that Kona is pushing. He had that in. And he followed this chain. This is hard to ink. To get the illusion that it's coming from the back of the ship all the way in front into the water and splashes right in front of the Vitor's eye. And that's cool how he did the back of the ship here because he did the uh, light and shadow on it. Here, as a alternative, now we got another inker that's going to ink John Buscemi. This is Sonny Trinidad. Again, John's worked out the arms here. You can see he's got the back muscles in. He's got the palm trees indicated. See those little X's on it? And a guy coming on a horse. And then this uh, guy here with the baggy pants and the curved sword. So what Sonny Trinidad did, I think he was using the pelican pen also, outlining all the figures. It's cool how he separated these uh, foliage palm trees here. And he pretty much followed what Basema did, maybe some light and shadow on the drapery. Horse is beautiful. Of course, Basema worked out the horse face. And now we'll go back to another page that Akello inked. This is uh, John Basema. Another savage sort of corner. I think it's that same story, actually. Oh, look how he got the hair in motion here. That's really unique and cool. Again, a foreshortened arm. Look at that arm there. Let's look at it close. It goes from the deltoid muscle to the bicep, to the forearm, to the hand itself. Did it in three sections. I like how I did this arm too. It's coming right towards the viewer. That's foreshortening. And then he did this uh, sexy kissing scene. Lift the girl right off her feet. Look at the hair motion. And this kind of crazed look on their faces. And then you got a cow here now. He's uh, following what he did. He, he made sure that arm was foreshortened. And he played with the hair nicely, making the hair flow right towards the reader. And this is all done with brush. Akella had invented a certain type of uh, brush pen. He took a Pentel fountain pen that was unique at the time. It didn't exist a pen like that. And he somehow was able to put India ink into it. I'm not sure what he did or how he did it, but... The inking would be non-stop. You'd refill it, it would last for hours, inking, 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 and inking. It's always fun to see these John Buscema panels that look very much like Neil Adams, because Neil Adams was a master of anatomy. Look at that back, how oh, the hairs are moving. Boy, you could study this stuff forever. I like how he did that uh, foot too. It's got that boot, and then it goes up the leg, the calf muscle into the knee and then the, into the hip. Again, a foreshortened arm, it goes away from Conan. Boy, those are creepy hands too, look at that. Wow, Jamba Sama, one of a kind artist. 
an absolute master of anatomy. I like this too because he did a silhouette panel. These creatures. But they're all in cool poses. Look at that. And he's running away in a very dynamic John Vassemo pose. Turning his head towards uh, what he's seeing in the background. And what we're seeing here is a f our leg in the foreground and a leg in the background. And the body twisting away from the viewer. Going to a dynamic face shot of Kona with his hair blowing in the wind. Wow, look at that. That's worth studying because look, some of the hair blew up in the sky. Some of it twisted and went away from the viewer and some went right across his face. He's got that snarl on his lip. And Master Inker Alfredo Akella with his brush pen ink the heck out of this and using his washes again diluted india ink to create these gray effects this is not marker work this is all washes put down wow look at that crazy look on uh going on his face he captured that real good kept all the anatomy intact and these are almost like how to draw these hands here look at that for shortened arm with the sword, you see the deltoid muscle, then you see the bicep muscle, and you see the forearm, and then you see the wrist, and then the hand. So you got one, two, three, four, five parts to draw that hand. And he kept all that craziness going on in the hair. And Akella, oh wow, look at, he didn't treat them all as silhouettes. He did some guys in silhouettes, and some of the guys he did in light and shadow. Well, that's pretty scary. Look at that. He was going on running, turning his head. Now, let's see what he did with the hair now. If he followed him. Yep, he followed it exact. Look at that. The crazy hair on the top. The hair twisting away from the viewer. And the hair going right across the eyes and forehead, wow, and going around his chin. Kelly did a tremendous job on this. And I'm going to end this up with showing a Gil Kane pencil drawing. This is for a Marvel Treasury book. Now, Kane made a sketch first, and then he did this tight pencil drawing. Again, this guy's a top anatomist also, not unlike John Bissama. In a way, he wasn't as realistic because he's coming from a Bern Hogarth type of situation, Jack Kirby-ish look. But look at that anatomy. It's hard to draw that. That's some latissimus dorsi muscle back there, the deltoid, triceps, forearms, wrist, and then hand. Look at the rib cage here. Now, the anchor's got to make a lot of decisions on this because he's indicated these, like, anatomy structure figures. He's not necessarily working out the shading, as you see here. Look at that foot. How to draw the foot. Wow, well, look at that arm on the submarine. and it's how to draw that arm. And this would be inked by Master Inker John Ramita, American Inker. Now, Ramita's famous for his beautiful women, like Gwen Stacy, and all the girls seen in Spider-Man, Mary Jane. He made the most handsome uh, Peter Parker ever seen. So what he's doing here, he's kind of fixing some of this up. He's making sure that... Thor looks handsome here. Putting light and shadow on uh, Captain America. Oh, look what he did here. He drew the folds that Kane did, but he put light and shadow on it. 
Well, that's a nice tear right there. He improved on that. And Kane didn't put any shadows on the thing, but this Ramita did. And Ramita pretty much followed the anatomy. It's doing light and shadow here. Lots of nice, uh, powerful ink lines. And he improved on the Hulk face. He made it look like a commercial version of the Hulk that Marvel would like better than what Kane did. And with Spider-Man up here, he added that spider uh, web uh, type thing. And he changed the Silver Surfer a bit. He put his arm up instead of down, making it more uh, commercial dynamic. The rest he followed pretty much like you see the Submariner. Okay, if you like uh, the content here, uh, please subscribe to my channel. And I plan to do a lot more of these uh, type of videos uh, because I was actually there in the offices in the 1970s. And I saw these artists, what they did. I was a young comic book artist coming up. Uh, Marie Severin would help me a lot, for instance. So I was up at the Marvel offices all the time, and I saw like the new artists coming in, like Rich Buckler, uh, Ed Hannigan, Ron Wilson. These were the younger guys that were coming in. Al Milgram, Ellen Weiss, all these new artists were coming in. I was part of that later. You also had guys working in the bullpen on the British comics, such as Howard Bender. Howard Bender uh, did a lot of penciling, as Jeff Acklin also did. They also worked in the same office as Herb Trimpey. So it was always exciting to come up to Marvel because these uh, superstar artists were actually still there. You could actually talk to them. Okay, uh, so I hope you learned something from this video and enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye.